to high school baseball on Comcast. Today, it's our final game of the 2005 season as longtime rivals Los Lomas and Camp Belindo meet here in Moraga. Dan Wall and Coach John Whitman is always here. And Coach, it's a kind of a sad day, but happy day. It's our last time together until 2006. Yeah, but we'll both be busy watching some major league games this summer. And, and a lot of stuff. As a matter of fact, we'll be back next fall right across the street here at the brand new football field. It should be fun. But back to today's game, Los Lomas and Camp Belindo both had great seasons. Today we're going to see two of the best players in the DFAL. Dial Fon's going to pitch today for Los Lomas. Nick Graziano is the big designated hitter for Camp Belindo. First, we'll talk a little bit about Fon. He is uh, one of the best players, one of the best outfielders in this entire region. Should get drafted next week, Coach, but he's on the mound today. Yes, he's only had eight innings pitched this so far this year, but they've been eight very strong innings. So along with his bat and his feet, they're really expecting him to do a great job on the hill today for them. Should be a, a lot of fun seeing Dial Fon for one of the last times, and quite possibly, obviously, the loser will go home after this game. We're in the uh, elimination round here in the uh, 2A playoffs. For Camp Alindo, Nick Graziano has been a great athlete. He was the MVP, most valuable player in football, most valuable player in baseball, and he's going to Nevada Reno to be the quarterback, and this is his last game here at the campus. And this, this facility is very well suited for him. That's why he's got five home runs here at this, at this very cozy confine. Yes, the cozy confines of Camp Alindo, folks. We'll be back with all the action. It's the Los Lomas Knights and the Camp Alindo Cougars next here on Comcast. <laughs> Take advantage today with rates at record lows. Charter Funding Incorporated of Antioch is your local mortgage broker whose commitment is service with integrity. Charter Funding Incorporated works with many lenders to find the best program to fit your needs. First time home buyers, 100% financing, no down payment and interest only. No one is left out. Whether it's a rate reduction, cash out, new purchase, good or bad credit, let the professionals at Charter Funding Incorporated handle all your loan details. Call us today at 776-1700. What is a coach, a teacher, a motivator, a leader? The person who sees your athletic potential and maximizes it, regardless of the sport. At Velocity Sports Performance, you train with a highly qualified coach every time you train. Your coach makes you work hard, but your coach makes you a better athlete. Train with a coach who knows. Velocity Sports Performance, maximize your potential. We guarantee it. Hi, I'm Rocco Viali, and I'd like to welcome you to Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria here in Walnut Creek. Rocco's is a great place for family dining. In addition to serving the best pizza in the East Bay, Rocco's also serves many classic Italian pasta specialties. Make Rocco's your home for your next team party. Great pizza, great pasta, great people. Rocco's! A part of your community. For decades, Dolan's has been providing the finest quality name brands for new construction and home improvement. Superior names like Marvin, Anderson, Milgard, Posey, and more. But it's Dolan's low truckload pricing and tradition of superior customer service that makes this retailer preferred by builders, architects, and homeowners throughout the community. Visit your nearest Dolan's and discover how affordable the very best can be. And join Dolan's in supporting your local teams. National Anthem here from uh, Camp Belindo High School. 
Los Lomas versus Campolindo, longtime rivals. We had this game in the football season. Coach Campolindo won that one over at Ocalanus High School. We'll get a good look later today at the new football field that they're uh, building here, and we'll be back at next year. But uh, for, first, we're going to take a look at the starting lineup uh, for Los Lomas, playing uh, here at Campolindo for the second time this, this season. They won here, actually, 2 to nothing back in April. They, they played games back-to-back -back those days and split that series. Kendall Kuhn, the second baseman, leads off for the Knights. Kyle Adkins at first base today hits second. Diallo Fawn, who should get drafted next week uh, rather high in the uh, Major League Baseball draft, will pitch today and bat third. Kevin Stanley, the catcher, hits fourth. Stephen Fishback, a very good junior, is actually playing today in left field. They have switched their lineup around a little bit. Doug Stinson, the center fielder, bats six. John Gilmore, the shortstop, will hit seventh. Jack Davis, the third bas baseman, bats eighth. And Tyler McFarland is a designated hitter today for the Knights. Here's a good look at the home team, the Campolindo Cougars. And here's the uh, defense that Campolindo will send out there. Solomon Miller and Gala in the outfield. Kathan, Cratter, Osman, and Bishop around the infield. Luke Murphy on the mound today for the Cougars. And Greg Irving, who hit the big three-run walk-off homer the other day right here to beat Dublin, will be behind the plate for head coach Max Luckers. And as soon as we, uh, we send it out there, we'll take a look at the big, lanky left-hander Luke Perry. Excuse me, Luke Murphy. Luke Perry was in Beverly Hills 90210. Yes. Beautiful day here at the park. Yeah, it should be a very, very nice uh, day. The wind is hardly hardly blowing here. Very nice, about 80 degrees out. And you mentioned this is a very cozy little park. Uh, should be a hitter's park, and it's actually kind of a strange field. The, the field slopes down in the outfields. It's yeah, like, I think a lot of that is due to drainage problems that they've had here in the past. But uh, they've done a lot of work here, and the mound is actually at, at the – the regular height of a mound. Uh, I've been here before when the pitchers have, we've had to run out and put cotton up their nose because it was, <laughs> it was so high they were getting nosebleeds. But it is 321 to straight to straightaway center and 321 down the line, which, is, which means the power alleys are probably right around you know, 330, and that's not real big power alley area. And that's where uh, Diallo Fon could have a lot to say about this game today as well as Mr. Graziano. The umpires for today's game, George Regopoulos behind the plate, Earl Finley at first base, and Mike Lopez at third base. We have three officials uh, today, and these officials are uh, rewarded for their fine uh, regular seasons. As you can see, the coaches out there meeting, Max Luckhurst and Dan Ward going over the uh, the ground rules. Coach Ward at Los Lomas in his eighth year won a North Coast section championship in 2003 against El Cerrito. You might remember that game well. Big Jeff Wilkerson, a double in the bottom of the seventh inning to plate two runs, two to one. Los Lomas won the championship. Campo won in 2000, and they also won one back in 1988 before most of the people that are associated with today's game were uh, on campus. But, Coach, you mentioned earlier this league is dominated since 1995. Only Ensenal has been able to win a North Coast section championship since they split the two and three A up, and uh, they're actually still in it. They play Miramani today as well, right down the street. Yeah, I got a chance to go out and watch Los Lomas and Miramani last week. That was a real fine ball game, uh, Mr. Fishbeck pitch, pitching that ball game. And you mentioned earlier that Los Lomas does have a win over Campolendo, and Fishbeck was the winning pitcher in that game. He shut him out two to nothing. He will not be on the hill today, but he could come in for relief. Uh, one thing that kind of irritates me about this, this game is that one team played on Friday and one team played on Saturday. And in baseball, that 24-hour that's, that period of extra rest for a pitcher is huge. Another thing that irritated me about this was that they couldn't get 16 teams to fill, to, to fill this. So they only got 12. So that one through four got buys. And in baseball, a buy is huge. It's not like softball where you can send the pitcher out there every day. Right. Everything's based on pitching here. And so those, the, both of these teams got a buy and were able to throw their number one guy against another team who already had to play a game and already used up their number one guy. There's uh, Luke Murphy as the Cougars take the field. Uh, just to, for both teams, a little bit of a background on them, but a good point, Coach. Los Lomas is 17-8 and eight overall, 13-5. and five. They were third in the DFAL. Last year they were 12 and 12 and 10 and 8 overall, so a slight improvement for Coach Ward's team. Beat Dublin 9 to 2 Friday at St. Mary's College, and of course the winner will play the winner of the Ensenal Maramani game. Now Campolindo 20 and 4, 16 and 2. They were the first place team in the DFAL. Kind of a surprise. A lot of people did not pick them that high. They were the pick for fifth, right? And Los Lomas was picked for third. So Coach, uh, you know, Luckers has done a great job getting his team ready. We mentioned Max Luckhurst in his fifth season. Now they beat Dublin 5-4 to four right here. We mentioned Greg Irving hit a three-run walk-off homer with one out in the bottom of the seventh to win that game 5-4. to four. And Dublin did everything but win the game. They <laughs> out-hit him. They out-defended him. They, they out-pitched him. They played very well. But a real timely hit by the Cougars, and they're in this game today. 
There's Coach Luckhurst. Not Mick Luckhurst, as we, uh, who was the kicker for the Atlanta Falcons back in the day, although he says he's a good friend. Uh, Los Lomas won that first meeting 2 to nothing back on the 28th of April, and probably due to weather, they played again the next day. And that was at Los Lomas, and Campbell won that game 8 to nothing. But we're not going to see either ace today. Osman is the uh, top pitcher for Campolindo. He will pitch more than likely if they win on Saturday. And, uh, of course, Fishback is the big pitcher. Now, Fawn is kind of an interesting story because he's not really their, their number two pitcher, but he, he's as talented enough to be a number two pitcher. And, and Coach Ward kind of animated to me that, like, if he takes it seriously enough, he could be a, a big-time pitcher. But it, during the season, he wanted to hit. He wanted to play in the outfield. But now, when it's do or die, they're going to put him on the mound. Well, he's a big money player, whether it be at the plate or in the outfield or on the bases. He throws the ball in from the outfield about 110 miles an hour, but throws it about 85 from the hill. So here we go, as you saw a good look of the dial of fun in the bullpen. Here's Kendall Kuhn batting 258 on the year, a junior second baseman. A couple of doubles for Kuhn. Both these teams uh, kept their stats up very nicely for us on uh, maxpreps.com. Thank you very much for that. Good place to go and look for your rosters and stats. Fastball for a strike to start this one off. Campo in the home white with the uh, blue uh, sleeves, which I like that look in baseball. I think it looks kind of cool. Los Lomas in the uh, traditional gray road uniforms. Fastball up high. I'd say Murphy brings it probably in the mid-80s, Coach. Both, both of these guys will be very, very similar. Both left-handed, both seniors, both throw in the mid-80s. Fastball curves and change-ups. And their defenses, both defenses will get some work today. That pitch was outside, two and one. Adkins, the first baseman, follows, and then Fawn, who's uh, batting 397 with four homers and 24 RBIs. Big battle between him and Graziano for the MVP in this league. There's ball three, three and one. And Luke has pitched 30 innings this year with 2.308 ERA. He's given it 25 hits in 30 innings. I know that's a big stat you like to look at. And the one I like at is 12 walks to 18 Ks. There's so you a can tell they're both, they're both very much controlled. Full count. Yeah, the walks is a big thing on, on both sides. If I'm coaching in this game, I cannot let Fawn beat me, and I can't let Graziano beat me with the long ball. And there's a walk. So a good at bat not only to get on, but to work that many pitches out of uh, Murphy, the first batter. So Kuhn on at first with the uh, base on balls. And here's Kyle Atkins, just a sophomore. His brother's also playing in today's game. Jake will be out in right field today. I got the pleasure of coaching both the twins in our traveling team a couple years ago. I was going to say they're both the same year, so they must be twins, although yes. that has come back to bite me a couple of times, Coach, when I've assumed <laughs> that, and they go, no, 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 no. Ball one to Atkins, 231 average during the uh, regular season. Murphy took a little bit off that one to get it over for the strike. One and one. You got two left-handers thrown today, so that will cut down the running game a little bit. You might look for a little more short game rather than hitting and running or straight stealing. So we got a nice scoreboard today. Yep, good look from first. Throw to first, this is not in time. That's Jeff Bishop at first base today for the Cougars. You can see a nice crowd gathering here today mm -hmm. for this uh, championship game. Both of these schools, the boys' sports programs, have had great years. We'll talk about that a little bit during the game. Runner goes. Throw is late and an easy stolen base for Kuhn. That was a delayed steal. He basically shuffled, shuffled. Nobody said anything, and then he went. The key for that is the right fielder. The right fielder is the only person who could see that happening in front of him, and he has to call that because no one else can see him going. The first baseman comes off and plays defense. The second baseman's watching the ball come into home plate. And the right fielder and the bench is also responsible to call that delayed steal. Well, we have the opportunity of the base being off of the, uh, if it broke, if it uh, kind of come off the uh, moorings there. For Los Lomas this year, their football team, always a, a power under Doug Longero. We're 8-5. and five. We saw them against San Ramon in the uh, championship game. There's uh, Kendall Kuhn with nine stolen bases on the year. Uh, San Ramon, uh, they lost to San Ramon in that game, and we mentioned we'll see Camp Lindo and San Ramon open the football season in about four months, so we're right across the street here. Be here uh, before you know it. it. You never know, the way the summer goes by. So the football team, good as always, the basketball team went to the uh, playoffs, lost to Clayton Valley in a game we also brought you. Camp Lindo, uh, successful uh, uh, just a little bit more, especially in basketball. Here's a look at the, or the replay of the base coming off here. You see everybody kind of got there a little bit late. And, yet and he, he got in there real early. 
The football team at Camp Belindo lost to Bishop O'Dowd in the 2A championship. We had that game for you as well. And Coach Macy does a great job here, and he's losing Graziano, which I'm sure is <laughs> causing him some nightmares. Yeah. Their only losses were to Bishop O'Dowd and San Ramon, who were the, uh, con you know, the uh, section champions. In basketball, they won the North Coast Section Championship in Division Three. They lost to Santa Cruz in the NorCal Final, 46 to 44. And of course, Chris Blackwood and Ross Nakamura were great players as that ball's fouled off. So both of these squads, you can expect them to be competitive in just about any boys' sport. And this is a huge at bat because you've got an open base and Fawn on deck. So if we can get Mr. Atkins here, you, I would be put Fawn on. But we'll see what happens. There's. You have to play this game like there's no tomorrow. And that ball is ripped down the right field line, and it's foul. And it's kind of hard to see down there because the field arch is down. And uh, you're not going to get a good look at that from our vantage point, but it looked like it broke foul. Here's a replay. And Atkins, and Atkins trying to hit the ball to the right side to move the runner over. Two balls, two strikes. Now they just try to use the whole field, put the ball in play. Coon, the runner at second. You can see him in our picture here. Two and two to Atkins. Here's the pitch. Off speed, and it breaks outside. So now, Coach, this is a huge pitch. Three and two, which you, and you mentioned Dial Fawn sitting in the on-deck circle. That ball just missed. A great late break. It just slid right off the edge of the plate. Off speed. Good at bat. And he, and he held up. That's a great at bat for a sophomore. Two walks here in the inning. No outs. Runners at first and second. And Dial Fawn will be the hitter. Here's a look at that pitch. Atkins picked up the spin of the ball early, knew it wasn't going to make it, and took it. Yeah, you could see he, uh, he knew real early what that was. Pretty similar pitch to the one that he threw uh, just uh, prior to that, mm -hmm. Coach, and probably one of the reasons why he was able to identify it. Fawn, 397 hitter, four homers, 24 RBIs, and one of the fine players here in the region. That pitch is up high. Fawn was listed as one of the top 50 players in the state of California. So you got a full count on the previous batter, and you got Fawn on deck. I'm coming hard, fastball, and, and trying to make it, that guy hit the ball. Now, you, now Fawn could have a big impact on this game right here. you got no place to put him. Throw to second, and Kuhn is uh, back. That's a good, good attempt that time as Osman, who's the other pitcher that uh, Campo will use if they get to the championship game on Saturday. The winner will play the winner of the Ensenal Miramani game, which is being played right now. The other two games today, O'Dowd hosting Monta Vista and De La Salle hosting California. A lot of talent out there today, Coach. Yep. Oof. That was right in the wheelhouse. And You'd like to have that one back. Yes, and it's uh, also out in the parking lot. I made sure I parked back behind and not to the side. There you go. He wasn't right on that, though, Coach. Yeah. He didn't foul it directly back, but uh, I think he identified that pitch well. And if he had gotten a hold of that, we might be uh, watching Knights running around the bases right now. One and one. That ball's driven. A high fly ball. In this stadium, that could be trouble. That's Miller. And he made a diving, a and he made the catch. Holy Toledo, what a play. The way we're sitting here, Coach, when you can't see, I don't know if Kuhn knows that he made that catch or what this call will be. And he's out. And now Dan Ward is going out to, uh, to ask the umpire what he saw there. But uh, Miller made it. Irregardless, Miller made an unbelievable catch on this. Here's Fawn, and look at this ball popped up. But in this park, that's uh, and it's out in those shadows, Coach. Right. Let's see if we can identify it this. It just here. keeps fading, fading, fading. Great God. catch. Wow. So Miller makes a great catch, and I don't know whether Kuhn tagged up or not, and Ward is not happy as the Kuhn is out on a double play, and that changes the uh, look of this inning Huge. drastically. That's a... That's a a uh, hard Stanley. double play. So Fawn is out on the fly to the center fielder Miller. Miller then threw the ball in, and it went to the third baseman who uh, threw over to second. So here's a replay once again of this great catch. It's outstretched. That could be a web gym. <laughs> Actually, I think I think it might be. Now here's here's the replay. Either that runner's 
Either that runner's real, real fast, or he left early. Yeah, and, and the call was is that he left early and didn't tag. So two down here, and Kevin Stanley will be the hitter, the catcher, and he rips it, and now you can see how fortuitous that catch was as Stanley was right on that ball as if uh, – Kuhn had been on second. He might have scored on that play. But as it is now, runners at first and second, two down, and Steve Fishback will be the hitter. That's Stanley's 19th, 19th hit of the season here. He's number two on the team in total hits, and he just crushes this. That's room service right down the heart of the plate. I have a feeling we're going to see some weird stuff happen here today, Coach. This field, to me, kind of lends to a different play. You can already see the shadows and the way the trees kind of yeah. sit here. And it's late. It's 5 o'clock. Usually they're in the fourth or fifth inning of a game during the season here. And that hits Fishbach. And now the bases are loaded. So Murphy is struggling here in the first inning, even though uh, Los Lomas has failed to score. And uh, Doug Stinson, the junior center fielder, batting 271, will be the hitter. Center fielder, Doug Stinson. Recognizes it, wears it, doesn't rub it. Goes to first. Well, I was going to say, if that, that's, that's the way to get hit. Uh, with an off-speed pitch on the uh, gluteus maximus. There you go. <laughs> Not going to uh, bother you that much. And you're looking fastball right here. You're taking anything else. Nothing marginal. And that ball gets uh -oh. by the catcher. Oh, and they have Atkins picked off a third. The throwback, and he made it back. Oh, he... Good thing for Los Lomas there, Coach. Atkins identified that ball did not come very far back. Irving made a nice play. And um, look at this throw here. And here's the, here's the tag. The ball beat him. But I guess he just couldn't quite reach him. Got to give credit to Atkins for that slide. He kind of slid away from the tag and made it back. So Atkins is on at third. Stanley at second. Fishbach at first. Two down. And that ball's hit very hard on a high hop to Osmond. But he makes the play. Throw to first in time, and somehow, magically, Campolindo gets out of it in the first. No runs for Los Lomas, the one hit. And we're going to stay right here and take a look at this replay and give you the lineups here as we head to the bottom of the first. Ball hit a big lip on the edge of the grass, took a nice big hop. He's got all day, throws a strike to first, and that was a, a lot of action in that inning. So here's the look at the Campolindo batting order. I, I don't think Dan Ward is still happy. No. Call. He still, he he still wants to talk to someone about that play. Here's the uh, Campolindo batting over for you that will face Dialofon. Terry Miller in center field today leading off. Nick Osmond, the second baseman, hits second. Ryan Kathon, the third baseman, will bat third. Nick Graziano, the MVP in the DFAL, the designated hitter today. Jeff Bishop at first base will bat fifth. Marshall Cratter is the shortstop, will hit sixth. The number seven <laughs> batter for you, I, can, I will have to revert to mine, is Greg Irving. He's the catcher and hits seventh. Steve Gallo, the right fielder, bats eighth. And Alex Solomon, the left fielder, will bat ninth. And Joel, our, uh, our graphics guy, has been fired by Matt in the truck right now. Well, he's got to buy lunch tomorrow, I think. <laughs> There's Dial O'Fawn on the mound. He's uh, throwing today for the Los Lomas Knights, one of his last games. A, a great four-year career at Los Lomas for Fawn. I remember when I saw Fawn when he was 15 years old, just a freshman. He's really filled out. And this year he's mostly be coming in as a closer. I saw him coming in, in the Miramonte game, pitched the last two innings, did a nice little job there. But uh, when he's in pitching, your defense is going to suffer a little bit in the outfield. Absolutely, because you're playing a sophomore. We'll take another look at the Los Lomas defense for you. Fishbach, Stinson, and a sophomore, as Coach was mentioning, uh, Jake Atkins in right field today, where Fawn would normally play. Davis, Gilmore, Kuhn, and Atkins, his brother, the twin brother of Jake, uh, Kyle, over at first base. Fawn on the mound and Kevin Stanley behind the plate for head coach Dan Ward. Let's take another look at that big catch. This, this could he, be season-saving. Uh, he this went a long way to get that ball. Remember, it's off a left-hander, so it's slicing away from him. That's just a great job out there. And then he had to uh, watch out for Solomon. Remember, Solomon is the f uh, running back on the football team. He's a bowling ball. He didn't want to run into him either. Here's Terry Miller. Miller was second team all DFAL, of uh, which you can understand after seeing that catch. A s senior batting 403. And starting in center field, making that great catch in the first. Here's and the first a gaudy pitch. on base percentage of 522. That is gaudy. 400 is very good. You're getting up to 500, that's tremendous. And he's in the right slot here. And that's spelled G A W D Y for those of you thinking, what, what did coach just say? <laughs> 
Fun does not exactly throw you know, as hard as you would think for a guy that can throw the ball from the outfield the way he does. He's more of a spot pitcher with a good curve and changeup. One and one to Miller. Osmond and Kathan here in the first for the Cougars. That's a strike, one and two. Fishback is probably available for a couple innings of relief work today late in the game if they need him. Johnny Holstaff is ready. <laughs> the whole staff is ready to go. That ball is ground foul. I was always, uh, my favorite staff was fall staff, of oh, course, okay. back in the end of the day. <laughs> Miller, a couple doubles this year, seven RBIs from the leadoff spot. She mentioned that uh, great on base percentage and a pretty decent slugging percentage for a guy that uh, oh, yeah. that's just. Uh, that's they, got some, they just have some off the chart numbers offensively. Good hook that time, but it breaks low two and two. Matt, you saw Max Ludkirst in our picture, the fifth year coach of Camp Alindo. Thanks to both coaches for getting us ready for today's game. This is a big game for these two teams. And there's a swinging strike three. Stanley digs it and throws over to Atkins at first base for out number one. But uh, see, I think that's one of the change-ups here too. One of the things when you have these kind of teams are so familiar with each other, I don't think anyone thought Fawn was gonna pitch today. I was kind of shocked when I saw it. Yeah. Coach Ward keeps you on your toes and got him on a breaking ball. Here's uh, Osman, the sophomore, who will be a great player here for the next couple of years. He's one of the best pitchers in the league. Was first team all DFAL as a pitcher. And a 425 on base percentage. So these guys are setting the table for Graziano. And he's batting 324. Kathan, the uh, next batter, 333. And then, of course, Graziano at 453. Not going to play baseball in college, though, because uh, of his uh, potential at quarterback at, in, at Nevada, Reno. Have to warn him about the weather up there in, in November. <laughs> yeah, he might want to play baseball. <laughs> we get to take those road trips to Riverside and places like that and get out of Reno for in the middle of March. Two and one to Osmond. Oh. Little change up. Took something off that one. That ball looked like it just dropped right out of an elevator shaft. Yep. Jack Davis, who played a little football at Los Lomas, is the third baseman. John Gilmore also played football, is the uh, shortstop today. And that ball just barely missed hitting Osmond inside. A little jump rope. Who we got umpiring today? I mentioned earlier, I think you were uh, talking to one of your scouts, <laughs> George Regala Rega Regapolis. R R Regopolis, that's oh, how you that was it. I had it the first time. And I then know you he's Greek. Look at it again. Regopolis, that ball's driven up nice the middle swing. for a base hit. Earl Finley and Mike Lopez on the bases today. All right from down in Fremont area. So again, North Coast section likes to move their umpires around. Third baseman, Ryan Cater. Yeah, he gets this ball up in the strike zone. Yep. And, and he just drove it nicely by and what you said about the other day about velocity and hitting the ball hard enough to so take, there can't be a play made. Take away it. reaction time. Yep. It's not how far you hit the ball, it's how quick the ball comes off the bat. That's the name of the game. Here's a Kathan, the Third baseman, change up for a strike, batting 333, a senior. So all the seniors playing their last game here on this field where they've had quite a bit of success over the years. Second team all league. Hit 333 and a 462 on pace percentage. That was an off-speed pitch that was uh, swung on and missed by Kathan. 0 and 2. Graziano and then Bishop, the first baseman, would follow here for Campolindo with one out in the bottom of the first, no score. 2A North Coast section playoff game today from Campolindo High School. The winner plays Saturday at Monta Vista against the winner of Miramani and Sinal. Uh, another a couple other teams that have had some success in recent years. That's going to be a tough play. High hop. Gilmore, one at second. Throw in time. Nice double play. And we've had a couple of nice defensive plays so far here in the first inning as there's no score between Los Lomas and Campolindo as we go to the second. If you dump your oil, tempers boil, it ends up in the bay. Oh, smile, it's all Buster Camera. 
Don't want your oil to choke us, you're in focus Your neighbors just might say Smile, it's a busted camera Well, it's not fun to pay a big fine We're polluting our water supply It's not fun to talk to police As the neighbors walk on by So now you're reeling, how's the wallet feeling? A big fine you're gonna pay Smile, it's a buster camera It's all Buster Camera. Looking for quality equipment rental with a helpful, friendly staff? Hertz Equipment Rental of Pacheco has over 4,100 pieces of reliable equipment to choose from, ready for delivery. Or if you're looking to purchase equipment, check out our pre-owned equipment sales list for super bargains on well-maintained pre-owned equipment. With Hertz, you have the right tool to get the job done. That's Hertz Equipment Rental at their new location, 30 South Buchanan Circle in Pacheco. Call Hertz today, 925-680-0316. Top of the second inning here from Camp Lindo High School. That pitch is coming, that ball's coming right back on me. The batter here is John Gilmore. The count is two and one now after the foul. You know what Kuko says? What's that? Bring your glove to the game. <laughs> We usually don't have that. So this is a short backstop here. We could we could catch a foul ball and a broken monitor. It'll be Gilmore Davis and McFarland. There's a strike. Luke Murphy out there working the second inning. Had a tough first inning. Had to get out of a bases loaded jam. And if it wasn't for that catch by Miller, we might be talking about a Los Lomas lead right now. A double play in each half inning. And there's a swinging strike three. Irving up with it and throws on the inside. That was a good uh, throw to avoid the runner. Out number one. It's a second two to three put out so far in the ball game. And here's Jack Davis, the junior third baseman. Ball down in the dirt. Catcher dropped it. Got a nice throwing lane in foul territory, so he doesn't hit him in the back. Nice job there, playing catch. One and zero to Davis. Ground ball into the hole. Oh, nice play at third by Kathan. The throw in time. Kathan with a nice throw to save a hit there for uh, Campolindo, and there's two down. The best thing he did was his first step was a drop step, and he took up some depth and gave him a chance to cover some ground. See him angle back. That's the key. Did a great job. Got his feet underneath him after that. Threw a strike to first base. That's a great play. First pitch to Tyler McFarland, the designated hitter, is a foul ball off to the right side for strike one. There's this McFarland's stats. He's got four stolen bases and four attempts. So when he gets on there, he could be a threat to run. He's a senior. In the designated hitter slot today, Kuhn would be the next hitter for the Knights here. No score in the second. Luke Murphy against Diallo Fawn. Big crowd out here now. People all the way up and down the sidelines here. And Ooh. that ball is hit slowly towards second. Osman, not in time. And so that'll go as an infield single. That was that was one of the uglier infield singles you'll see, but it, it, it it's a single in the book nonetheless, Coach. It took four different hops to get to the second baseman. Here it is right here. High one, under the glove, skips, takes another high one. It looks like one of those super balls you used to play with as a kid. And then Osman, I think the spin got him in his glove and had to kind of bobble it, but that's a base hit for McFarland, the second hit of the ball game for the Knights. And back to the top of the order for Kendall Kuhn, who walked to lead off the ball game back in the first. I'd look to bunt for hit. The third baseman's playing in short left field. Throw to first, not in time. It's a great bunt for hit opportunity right here. Yeah, um, Kathan is playing somewhere near the gym. Yes. Throw Definitely. to first and not in time. He is very deep for a guy that you would think would be a bunning type of a player. Mm -hmm. Of course, the leadoff batter, your second baseman, those are always the kind of guys you figure would be right. good bunners. Guys with not as much power at the top of the order, guys that get on base. First pitch is a ball, 1-0. Put 
something more on that one, but it uh, went high. Rocco's Ristorani and Pizzeria voted best pizza in the East Bay. Ignacio Valley Road at Oak Grove. Thanks for, uh, we want to thank all of our great friends of the program. And if you, uh, if you like high school sports and want to see us continue to do this um, as, as much as we do, uh, go out and patronize some of these people who uh, help put us put this on year after year. One of them is Togo's. Thanks for today's crew meal, guys, uh, over on uh, Ignatia Valley Road at Oak Grove. So hope to see all you guys back for football season. Starts in September. Maybe uh, later in the game we can get a look from the scissor uh, lift of the new football field, which is being, uh, you can see the uh, in that picture right there, that is a kind of a, uh, a construction. Facade. Uh, a facade, that's a very good word. A, a construction facade that has been built. Don't ask me to spell it. Yeah, F-A-C-A-D-E. That's probably but, it. Um, I like that, a facade, as that ball, that was a walk, and now Kuhn will be on at first base, but the, which is not a facade. No. <laughs> and he's walked twice. So now McFarland down to second, Kuhn at first, two down, and Atkins, who walked on a very good at bat, back in the first will be the hitter. But anyway, if you see, when you look through our, you can see the press box up on the hill, stands being built, and all the stands are on the opposite side of the field, Coach, so we'll have to take a look at that uh, mm -hmm. when we get a chance. First and second, two down here in the second. Atkins hit a loud foul ball his first time up. That pitch down the middle for a strike. You do not want to, there's, there's a look at it, there's the goal posts, and there, there's the new field you can see, very nice, all the stands, very, very big. There's a new press box that's being built. Uh, I think that's the John Whitman Memorial Press Box, they call them that. That one night we were in there, it was. <laughs> well, that's the old press box. Yes. That was the, uh, I think that was Mickey Mouse Memorial that's Press right. Box. But uh, yes, we will. Uh, they have an all-new uh, facility here, and that'll be great. And our first game next year on September 9th, which we'll show you that weekend, will be San Ramon at Campolindo. So we'll end here this year and show up across the street on, in September. 0-2 to Atkins. Runner goes. Ball hit. Nice play nice by the shortstop. Cratter over to first. Nice dig out. out at first by Bishop. And once again, the, de the defense has just rose to the occasion here so far in this game. We played an inning and a half. No score. For decades, Dolan's has been providing the finest quality name brands for new construction and home improvement. Superior names like Marvin, Anderson, Milgard, Posey, and more. But it's Dolan's low truckload pricing and tradition of superior customer service that makes this retailer preferred by builders, architects, and homeowners throughout the community. Visit your nearest Dolan's and discover how affordable the very best can be. And join Dolan's in supporting your local teams. It doesn't matter what sport you play. It doesn't matter what position you play. It doesn't matter whether you're turning pro or just starting out. It doesn't even matter how old you are. If you want to maximize your potential, you need Velocity Sports Performance. Velocity Sports Performance. Maximize your potential. We guarantee it. Affordable, professional, and convenient auto care has arrived. Auto Care 2000. Auto Care 2000 works on American and foreign autos with friendly professional mechanics that know your auto inside and out. Auto Care 2000 will even take your used oil and filter. Caring for our environment, that's Auto Care 2000, open seven days a week. Auto Care 2000 at 3405 Clayton Road in Concord. Auto Care for the next century and beyond. Back at Campo Lindo High School, no score, bottom of the second inning. It'll be the 4-5-6 for Campo. Nick Graziano, Jeff Bishop, and Marshall Cratter, who made a fine play there at the end of the second inning. And both teams showing why they're here with their good defense. Graziano, the MVP of the uh, Diablo, uh, excuse me, the Diablo Foothill Athletic League, the DFAL. 453 average, five homers, 31 RBIs. And coach, here's some other stuff about Nick Graziano. Of course, he was a big time football player here. He's going to play quarterback at Nevada Reno, but he also was first team in baseball last year, led the league in homers and RBIs in 2004 as well. He's a Bible study guy in the morning between 640 and 730. He's an Eagle Scout, a World War II history buff, scholar athlete, and he umpires for the Moraga Baseball and Football Leagues. They're going to be, it's going to be sad when he walks out of here at the end of. Uh, uh, of school next week. He's had a big impact on this campus after what I just heard from you. Yes. So that he's had a, he's touched a lot of different uh, people in a lot of different ways here. A well-rounded young man. And to look at him, you wouldn't think he would be the quarterback. That was the the 
interesting thing about him. Oh, Vaughn took something off that one as uh, Graziano took a McGuire-like swing. Here's a look at it out in front of that changeup, one and one. That ball is hit well center field. I don't know if he got all this or not, no, he and didn't. he didn't. About halfway up. Yep, there's the center fielder, Stinson, making the catch for out number one. The interesting thing about Graziano, Coach, is he wasn't a quarterback a couple of years ago. He was a linebacker, and they didn't have a quarterback, and they've made him into the quarterback. And, of course, he had some unbelievable stats, 2,815 yards, 29 touchdowns, was the all-league quarterback, the co-MVP in the league, and, of course, uh, earned a scholarship to play in college. Here. Here's Jeff Bishop, 321 hitter. The, the second on the team with 22 RBIs. That's a great stat. You know, anybody can get hits, but can you get them with runners in scoring position? That really separates the men from the boys. And he was a first team all DFAL player as well. And of course, batting behind Graziano, he probably saw a fair number of uh, balls thrown to Graziano so they could get to him. Mm -hmm. And he came through in those situations. A senior also playing his last game here today on the Camp Alindo campus. The big question is, will Diallo Fon perspire on the mound today? He just <laughs> looks like he's in complete control, nice, easy, fluid. He's an outfielder just kind of pitching out there, nice, fluid motion. You know, Coach, you say this is, the, the, we should probably say this is their last game as a Cougar because you never know if it's summer leagues or some sort of extended baseball league if these kids might actually play here again. I know I played at Antioch after I left the school, but uh, this is their last game as a high school student. Bishop walks. And here's Marshall Crowder, the shortstop, the junior, batting 286. And he had 19 RBIs, third on the team. So that's nice thing, a nice offensive lineup here. You can see why they've been so successful. Well, as you mentioned, they were picked to finish fifth by the Contra Costa Times. They were not picked at the top of this league, and they went 16-2, and two, an unbelievable year. There's a strike. Campo's only losses were to Dublin and to Las Lomas, so they beat Miramani both times this year as well. One one to Crowder, throw to first. I'm there. And Bishop leads the team with 18 stolen bases, coach. That's another interesting stat for your first baseman. Not many first basemen lead uh, the team in stolen bases. Sidearm curveball stays outside, one and one. I never like to lob the ball over to first, you know, on a pickoff because you never know. You might guy might be leaning. You, if you don't snap it over there hard, you haven't got a chance to get him. And if he takes off, you're going to have a hard time catching the ball and throwing it to second. Because now, now it becomes a foot race between the ball and the runner. Time at the plate here as Cratter uh, gets ready, one and one here in the bottom of the second, no score. The wind has died down. There's an off-speed pitch that broke over the inside of the, uh, the plate at the uh, knee. There's a great scissor lift shot from uh, up above to Hertz Equipment Rental. Thanks, Pat. Visit their uh, newest location at uh, South Buchanan Circle in Pacheco. Thanks to uh, Frank over there. Grounder to the third, takes a bad hop off of Davis's leg, and all runners will be safe there. We're going to have to refer to coach on that one. That ball's got to be caught. OK, so an error on the third baseman. Right to him. It was hit well, but it wasn't too hot to handle. So Bishop moves down to second. And here's a replay. Now batting number 15, catcher Greg Irving. And uh, an error on the third baseman, Davis. Runners at first and second, one out. And here's Saturday's hero, Greg Irving. Three run homer to end the ball game. That had to be exciting. As you mentioned, Dublin had basically had that one wrapped up and ready to move on. That's why it ain't over till it's over. Irving, uh, honorable mention, all DFAL, played football. As a matter of fact, he's the third Irving to play here at Campo. His brothers, Kyle and Sean, preceded him here on the Campo Lindo campus. There's a ball outside. He also played football. We mentioned he was a big part of that team that went all the way to the North Coast Section Championship game with Mr. Graziano and also Alex Solomon. Those all big names on that team. 
say hi to Coach Macy. I'm, next time I talk to him, it'll be Coach. It's uh, time for lineups. <laughs> Sometime about the last week of August. Runner goes. The throw is right there, in t and they called him safe. Uh, I, I don't agree with that at all. And I know Coach Ward doesn't agree with that. And Jack Davis doesn't agree with it. Unless someone can show me where this tag uh, did, came in late. I thought the ball was there and the tag was there at the same time. Here's a replay. You can see the runner going there, Coach. Here's the throw. Works behind the hitter, like he's supposed to. Can't tell. I don't know. Maybe it was bang, bang, but it looked like the ball beat him there. That's all we can go on over on this side from our vantage point, which is <laughs> looking through the backstop. Yep. I just know that it, I don't, I don't know that, that Los Lomas has uh, gotten the calls they thought they should have got so far in this ball game. There's a fastball for a ball, two and one. The runner over at first base, Crater, stays there, and uh, he remains at first with Bishop at third. Now Bishop, there's, there's Bishop's speed for you now with 19 stolen bases. And the middle infield is back. They're going to concede a run here. They try to try to turn a double play. We got one out that could get him out of the inning. Here's a curve up high. Runner at first. Crater breaks, and he makes it to second. And now there's runners at second and third with one out and a 2-2 count to Greg Irving. Now, now the infield's up. One out. Inside, three and two. Steve Gallo, the right fielder, would be next, a 318 hitter. There's Coach Luckhurst. Trying to get on the scoreboard here in the bottom of the second inning. Grounded, pitch. grounded foul. Fawn has that changeup that the, the delivery doesn't change. It looks exactly the same, either fastball changeup, and uh, if you don't time it just right, you can look pr pretty silly. Look at the crowd that's gathered down the... Uh, Starting to swell. Yes, the right field side. Standing room only at uh, the cozy confines of Camp Palindo High School. And there's a walk to Irving. So the bases are loaded, one out, and sophomore Steve Gallo will be the hitter. That's not all bad. Now the middle infield can play back at look at turn two and get out of the inning. Corners will be coming home. Pitcher will be coming home. Middle will be trying to turn it. Gala has 11 RBIs on the year, batting 318. Solomon, the senior left fielder, will bat if Gala can extend this inning here. One out. Bases loaded. Irving, Cratter, and Bishop on the base pass for the Cougars. 1 0 to Gala. Here's the pitch. Throw back, not in time, to third. Count is now 2 0 to Gala. There's a strike. Have to think this might be a pitch to hit here, Coach. Yep. This could be a big emotional lift for Campolindo if they can get on the board here and score against Diallo. 2 and 1. And time called at the plate by Gala. Pitch. Yeah, Curveball outside corner, two and two. Purchase your copy of this game, shipping courtesy of UPS included. Call 933 6264. This is where you want to get him here. You don't want to go to three and two because then the umpire really comes into play here. And time called once again.
good look at the uh, Campo dugout here. Big pitch, two and two. And a little uh, nubber to first. Throw home, not in time, over the head of the catcher, Stanley. And like, he has oh, they got a guy two. second. Everyone gets back, though, safely. So that little nubber, as Atkins really didn't have much more of a play, a good throw probably would have got the runner. But the error on first baseman Atkins allows the run to score. Campolindo leads one to nothing. Now your your catcher is, is, is like a first baseman here. He puts his foot on the base, and he's hoping for a, a, a good throw. He pulled him off, was high and to the left. So and two errors in the inning, Coach, are hurting uh, Los Lomas after all the great defense we saw early in the ballgame. And here's Alex Solomon, the left fielder. Inside for ball one. So Bases remain loaded, Coach. Go ahead. And so Los Lomas got the ball they wanted. They got a ground ball to first, and it didn't turn out the way they hoped. They weren't going to get a double play on it. It was not going to be home to first. But they were looking for a force play there and hopefully not turn the order over. Grounded foul. Solomon was a fine running back for that uh, Cougar team. 603 yards, seven touchdowns this year. There's the uh, runners out on the base pass over third base, Cratter. Irving at second, Gala at first. Solomon the hitter, and Terry Miller, the leadoff batter, is waiting in the on-deck circle for Campolindo. One and one count here to Solomon with the one out in the bottom of the second, and Campo now leading one to nothing. Fastball That's his best strike. fastball of the day right there, velocity-wise and location-wise. Yeah, inside corner right at the knees. Kind of froze Solomon up there. Count one and two. Ground nice ball into left field base hit. Here comes one runner. They're going to hold Irving at third. Two to nothing, Campolinda. Marshall scores on Ground ball six hole. Hit. Stayed Not back nice on that off-speed pitch. Off Get it to left field. And center fielder Terry Miller. Got it right in the six hole. And in this field, your outfielders are playing a little bit closer, so you're not going to have a chance to score as many times on a base hit to the outfield with a runner at second. So Coach Luckers held the runner, as he should have, and now they turned it over. Here's Miller, top of the order. Struck out in the first. Miller yeah. has 16 RBIs himself at that leadoff. You were mentioning about his, uh, his slugging percentage earlier. A 4.03 hitter. Two in here in the second, 2 nothing Campo. Ooh. Ball inside, 2-0. Brennan Theaters, Movie Magic in Concord and Pittsburgh. You can see uh, The Longest Yard. Star Wars is still out there, Coach. And a lot of great movies as we head into the summer. That new fight one's coming out. Cinderella Man. Yeah. Russell Crowe. I think that's a couple weeks away. Ball. Is up high, 3-0, and oh, and Fawn is in trouble of walking in a run here. He doesn't get this one over, Coach, and you don't want to extend this lineup much more, and Mr. Graziano comes up with the bases loaded. There's a strike. Good take. 3-1. and one. Now I'm looking fastball only. I'll take the breaking ball. Nice view from behind home plate. Strike two on the inside corner, full count. They've uh, extended Fawn now in this inning. It's kind of been the reverse. Fawn got out of the first with some good defense, but he's had to pitch a lot here in the second. There's a ground ball to short, could be two. To second for one, throw to first, in time, and they get out of it. And so even though Campolindo does score two, Los Lomas able to get out of it with the double play. And after two innings of play, it's Campolindo two, Los Lomas nothing. Tonight's Comcast Game of the Week is made possible by a generous donation from the 19th Hole Casino at West Tregalis Road. Established in 1967, the 19th Hole has been completely renovated. Open seven days a week, they feature Texas Hold'em, no bust 21 blackjack, low ball, 
high-low split, high gal, and provide kino and lottery sales. Every Tuesday and Wednesday beginning at 5.30 p.m. is a no-limit Texas Hold'em shootout with winner take all. Friday and Saturday night is karaoke at 9 p.m. And Sunday 9 a.m. is NFL football on all 14 TVs. The 19th hole behind the post office in Antioch. Golf and Games Family Fun Center of Antioch. Under new ownership, Golf and Games has it all. A miniature golf course with many challenging holes, hard and softball batting cages with several speeds, a giant arcade with all the newest games, go-karts, pool tables, snack bar, and prize station for those big ticket winners. The perfect place for birthday parties and events. That's Golf and Games Family Fun Center at 501 Summersville Road in Antioch. Thanks again to all of our friends from the Comcast Game of the Week. There's some of the uh, crowd out here today at Camp Palindo High School. We have an overflow crowd here today. These stands are filled up behind us. People up and down the sidelines, uh, baselines here, Coach. This is when you want Diallo at the plate. Nobody on. Fawn flew out. Uh, he was a uh, part of that controversial play, the fly to Miller, where Miller then doubled up Kuhn at second base, and that got uh, Campolindo out of the first inning. Rounded foul. So look at uh, Luke Murphy out on the mound. He's a senior. His last appearance as a Cougar here. But I think Campolindo's in pretty good shape uh, with Ausman coming back for the next couple of years. I think we have a disciplinary problem here in the stands. So I guess someone in the uh, the stands must have said something. Did you did you hear what it was, Coach? Was no, it? but he was at the previous game that I saw them against Miramati, and he was quite vocal. Oh, that's a number. Number out to short. That's going to be a tough play for Cratter, and he makes it. Nice play. Uh, they they retire the speedy Fawn for out number one. That is a great play. This Fawn can get down the line. Now batting number three, catcher Kevin Stanley. Yeah, just hits that ball right on the cap of the bat. Great exchange. And got him out. Great job. So Fawn retired for out number one, and here's Stanley, who had a solid single in the first. And there's another well-hit ball fielded by Kathan. The throw in time, out number two. Another great job at drop stepping and covering some ground. Took a little while getting rid of it, but, that, but, but threw a strike. Now batting number 21, left fielder, Steve Fishback. Here's Fishback. Coach, talk about his pitching stats just a little bit for a guy that, uh, did I throw you off there? Yeah, he did. <laughs> he did. He here did. they are right It's here. okay. Um, yeah, innings pitch, he's got 53 ERA of is that zero? What do you got? 092. Yeah, it looks I th like. thought that was a zero. And an eight and one. And wow. I like his walks to strikeouts, 18 to 71. I mean, that's huge. So he's he's getting a lot of strikeouts and not walking very many. And he's eight and one overall. And he'll be back next year, just a junior. Yeah, he does a really good job. Oh one one pitch. He a did ball. pitch that game that I went to, so I got a chance to see him up close. Saw him a couple years ago when he was 15. Oh and two here to Fishbach. Stinson would be next. And that ball is hit a long way, but foul down the left field line. Any ball that's elevated here and you're coaching, you're worried. Yeah, now we're starting to see that. That's the all-star game shadow is what that's called, Coach, or the late, late in the year, the 530 shadow. 
because of the uh, when they usually start those games uh, on the West Coast at five o'clock, you start to get those shadows around the pitcher's mound. Charter Funding Incorporated, seven seven six seventeen hundred for all your financial. Yeah, he waited really well on that ball. That ball's driven, and it's off the left field fence. Fish back around first, down to second with a double, and boy, did he hit that ball a long way. Yeah, hit an off-speed pitch, stayed back really well, kept his hands back, and drove it right down the line. A little more elevation, and it was out of here. Good lower half. Nice uh, shot there of the flight of the ball. A little bobble, little. They got their little monster out there. That, that would have been a home run if it had hit. Uh, we're pretty close to a home run with the, just the normal fence, but they got the little monster out there because they probably have had so many home runs here. Here's Stinson, who grounded out to second base and the first. Grounder towards Kathan, and he boots it, and that's going to be an error on the third baseman, Kathan, as Fishback moves to third. That was probably one of the easiest balls he's had all day. And isn't that how it usually goes, yeah. Coach? He's got a little top spin on it, though. Came up on him just a little bit. Still, I think, a ball that he feels he should have made a play on. And Los Lomas is in business here, but there's two outs. So Gilmore gets a chance here in the third. There's the runners over at third fish back at first. Stinson. And this ball popped up to center. And Miller, on the first pitch, puts it away for out number three. Los Lomas is held off the scoreboard again. We go to the bottom of the third, 2 0 Campo. Your Les Schwab Tire Centers are proud to be the new tire. Take advantage today with rates at record lows. Charter Funding Incorporated of Antioch is your local mortgage broker whose commitment is service with integrity. Charter Funding Incorporated works with many lenders to find the best program to fit your needs. First time home buyers, 100% financing, no down payment, and interest only. No one is left out. Whether it's rate reduction, cash out, new purchase, good or bad credit, let the professionals at Charter Fund Incorporated handle all your loan details. Call us today at 776-1700. What is a coach, a teacher, a motivator, a leader? The person who sees your athletic potential and maximizes it, regardless of the sport. At Velocity Sports Performance, you train with a highly qualified coach every time you train. Your coach makes you work hard, but your coach makes you a better athlete. Train with a coach who knows. Velocity Sports Performance. Maximize your potential. We guarantee it. Looking for quality equipment rental with a helpful, friendly staff? Hertz Equipment Rental of Pacheco has over 4,100 pieces of reliable equipment to choose from, ready for delivery. Or if you're looking to purchase equipment, check out our pre-owned equipment sales list for super bargains on well-maintained pre-owned equipment. With Hertz, you have the right tool to get the job done. That's Hertz Equipment Rental at their new location, 30 South Buchanan Circle in Pacheco. Call Hertz today, 925-680-0316. Great crowd here today at Camp Lindo High School. Two to nothing, Cougars over the Los Lomas Knights here as we go to the bottom of the third inning. Nick Osmond, Ryan Kathan, and Nick Graziano for the Cougars who Got their runs in the bottom of the second inning due to some uh, sloppy defense on yep. the uh, part of the Knights. Good team will make you pay if you make a mistake. Campolando did that. And uh, of course, Fawn walked a couple of guys in that mm -hmm. uh, inning. And uh, the number nine batter, Solomon, came through with the big hit, the only hit of the ball game so far off of Fawn. That ball popped up into center. The right fielder is calling for it. That's Atkins, and he makes the catch for out number one. One pitch, one out. That's important here for Fawn here in the third inning. Now batting number three, third baseman, Ryan Kathan. Images of three hair salon, Auto Care 2000, 19th Hole Casino and Lounge, Randy's Carpet Care, Bridgehead Self Storage, Antioch Opticians, and Rock Bottom Records. Coach, you asked me, yes, there is a new album out. Do you remember Oasis back from the mid-90s? No. English band, no. big time? Okay. You don't know anyone, do you? I know a few. Okay. Well, we'll try to find you one that wasn't on the uh, laugh-in. That was no laughing matter right there as uh, Kathan gets uh, plunked on the first pitch. And that's not something you want to do is put a guy on in front of Graziano. No, his his ball runs in on a right-hand hitter. Graziano hit a deep fly ball to center in the second. 
He's 0 for 1, batting 453 on the year. And that ball is grounded just foul outside of third. Need a ball. Yeah, about foul, about a foot. Graziano's up there to hack, coach. It looks like he's ready to swing. I don't think he wants to walk. <laughs> no. And you're a four hitter. You don't really give him a lot of signals as is taking place here. Fastball in the inside corner. He only walked seven times this year, which is kind of amazing when you think about it, that he only walked seven times. The guy that you would think probably has been intentionally walked at least twice that many times. 0-2 to Graziano here in the bottom of the third. And that grounded to third. Davis to second, in time for one. The throw to first, not in time. So Graziano reaches on the fielder's choice. Two down. He reached for that. Extended. Nice feed. First baseman, Jeff Fisher. That shows you his, his athletic ability. Got down the line real well. He leaves June 12th, so he has 11 days. And he's not going to have much time to celebrate <laughs> the uh, graduation. I know we hadn't stopped the party on June 12th, Coach. It was still going. <laughs> nice change. I don't think Nick will have too much time. He'll be, he'll be in uh, drills by about the 14th, I would assume. Here's Bishop, the first baseman, walked in the second and scored the first run. Another pitch. nice pitch for strike two, 0 and 2. It's a big inning for Diallo. Try to put a zero up on the board here. Get back in that dugout. Score some of those runners if they left on base. Fouled off. A couple of fine players are not in the lineup for Las Lomas today. Kevin Klink and Vince Karakasian. Karakasian got hurt in practice yesterday and has stitches. He's the starting left fielder. And Klink has been one of the top uh, designated hitters. As a matter of fact, he was first team. And neither of them are available today. So Coach Ward and his staff was a little bit perplexed as to how they were going to put their lineup out there today, Coach, before the game. That's a ball. And Diallo dropped down there. A little, little slide, sidearm slurvy. Is that what you get at 7-11? Nah, I was waiting for that okay. one. <laughs> a little different arm angle there. One and two. Nice pitch. Popped up. Near foul territory and out of play off of the top of the Campolindo dugout. A nice field here, Coach. We have the brick dugouts, steel stands built right into the field, a little retaining wall behind you, and, of course, fenced in with the nice trees behind you. A nice place to watch a ball game. Fitness, Fitness 19, where you can afford to be fit on Ignacio Valley Road in Walnut Creek for $19. Counts one and two. Off-speed pitch, ground to the third. Davis, tough play. The throw in time to retire the Cougars here in the bottom of the third. No runs for Campos. We go to the fourth. Two to nothing, Cougars. And after three complete, the score remains. Campolindo two, Las Lomas. Hi, I'm Rocco Bialy, and I'd like to welcome you to Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria here in Walnut Creek. Rocco's is a great place for family dining. In addition to serving the best pizza in the East Bay, Rocco's also serves many classic Italian pasta specialties. Make Rocco's your home for your next team party. Great pizza. Great pasta. Great people. Rocco's is part of your community. Affordable, professional, and convenient auto care has arrived. Auto Care 2000. Auto Care 2000 works on American and foreign autos with friendly professional mechanics that know your auto inside and out. Auto Care 2000 will even take your used oil and filter. Caring for our environment, that's Auto Care 2000, open seven days a week. Auto Care 2000 at 3405 Clayton Road in Concord. Auto Care for the next century and beyond. 
Get ready, Northern California. Mazay Pontiac Cadillac Buick GMC has a huge selection of new and certified pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Mazay invites you to experience our superior service and selection. Our new state-of-the-art facility and team of experts will make your car buying experience the best in the Bay Area. Hi, I'm Matt Mazay. Whether it's a Cadillac Escalade or a GMC truck, I'll guarantee you the right car at the right price. Come by and see us today. Discover the difference at Mazay Pontiac Cadillac Buick GMC in the Century Auto Plaza, Pittsburgh. Top of the fourth inning, Jack Davis, the batter for Los Lomas, to count 1-0. and Actually, 2-0 and now after that mm -hmm. pitch from Murphy. There's a fastball for a strike. Here's Davis' season stats. The third baseman made a nice play there to end the bottom of the third on defense. Wasn't that usually how it worked for you? You made a great play, and then, you, and then it was your turn to hit? Sometimes. I wasn't actually known for my great defensive plays. I was more known more for plays like that. <laughs> yeah, Murphy, the bishop, Murphy almost one. threw one in the, in the bullpen he down there. Tr tried to throw it down now to the truck. The Watch hitter, this. Number five, Tyler McFarland. I think he thought about going underhand, and he goes overhand there. Whoop, whoop. And then we find the bag. And Bishop saved that for him. So Davis retired on a one to three for the first out. McFarland will be the hitter. He had a single. Only three hits so far in the ballgame for Los Lomas, and just one hit for Campolindo, but uh, they have two runs on the board. And a lot of base runners. Uh, this is about the halfway point in the ball game here. Los Lomas is going to have to start doing something if they're going to threaten uh, against Mr. Murphy, knowing that uh, Osman may be available to pitch the seventh. Yeah, this is usually the time of the game where I started getting people up in the bullpen just so they would be ready, especially if they're a position player. Cratter, Steve Mathias, and Andy Hollings were some of the other names that we might see uh, out there. Murphy and Osman obviously are the top two pitchers for Campo. Good pitch. I always felt one of the worst things you could do as a coach is call in a position player to pitch in the middle of an inning and you didn't get him a chance to warm up in the bullpen prior to that. Two and one to McFarland. Grounder towards short. Cratter, strong arm, in time. Two down. Cratter is... Uh, Quite a player in the field, Coach. We can see that again. Marshall did a great job of reading that ball. Watch him go from right to left. I call it out to in and down to up. See him moving to it. He gets out, so his momentum is carrying him towards first base and throws another strike there. And he was uh, honorable mention all DFAL and just a junior, so we'll see him back next year. He loves heavy shortstop coming back. Grounder to the third. Kathan, plenty of time. The throw. In time, one, two, three inning for Murphy here. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Campolindo still leads two to nothing. For decades, Dolan's has been providing the finest quality name brands for new construction and home improvement. Superior names like Marvin, Anderson, Milgard, Posey, and more. But it's Dolan's low truckload pricing and tradition of superior customer service that makes this retailer preferred by builders, architects, and homeowners throughout the community. Visit your nearest Dolan's and discover how affordable the very best can be. And join Dolan's in supporting your local teams. So many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part. New research tells us that just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? For more advice on how kids can build strong bones, visit aaos.org, a public service message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Looking for quality equipment rental with a helpful, friendly staff? Hertz Equipment Rental of Pacheco has over 4,100 pieces of reliable equipment to choose from, ready for delivery. Or if you're looking to purchase equipment, check out our pre-owned equipment sales list for super bargains on well-maintained pre-owned equipment. With Hertz, you have the right tool to get the job done. That's Hertz Equipment Rental at their new location, 30 South Buchanan Circle in Pacheco. Call Hertz today, 925-680-0316. Marshall Cratter, Greg Irving, and Steve Galla here in the bottom of the fourth inning, Coach. One thing about Marshall, Marshall came in in the previous game against Dublin, 
and in the top of the fifth inning, he came in after two runs were given up. He came in and shut down Dublin after that for three innings, gave up no runs on only one hit, and got the, actually got the win in that game. So he, he, he could do it all. Reached on an air. Nice shot from the... Uh, Nice shot from the scissor lift there. Yeah, the shadow will be there. And that, that's always an advantage, for, advantage more for the pitcher, I, thought, I yep. think. Fastball for a strike, two and one. Cratter, as I mentioned, reached on an air and scored the second run for the Cougars in the second inning. They only have one hit in the ballgame by Solomon. Swung on and missed by Cratter, two and two. Irving is next. Good pitch. Rounder up the middle, tipped by Fawn, picked up by shortstop Gilmore, throw in, not in time, pulled the first baseman off the base. And that's the third call that has went against Las Lomas in this ballgame. That was close, coach. I, I, don't, I don't see that. I just think you're looking for things there. Let, let the let the game take take place and let things just happen. So we have to call that an error on now the third baseman. Number 15, catcher Greg Irving. Looks okay to me. Then he, then it was then after that he does come off, but it looked like he had the catch. Yeah, it looks like he gave it up when he went to throw the ball back yeah. in, but uh, Coach Ward can't be too pleased with the calls that have went against him in this ballgame. But I do agree with you in, in, in a sense, Coach. There are times when you make a play or you make a call, and there's times when you just let them. That call wouldn't have been made in a million years in any upper-level game. Mm -hmm. You're right on track there. So Cratter on it first on the air, the third air of the ball game for the Knights. And the first pitch to Irving is a strike. By the way, Irving's hero is Nebraska former quarterback Tommy Frazier. I, I have no idea why, unless, I, can you think of anything? No. no okay, that's like kind of like saying my hero's Marquise Grissom. I, I don't know. Son. <laughs> pitch. I think, I think Tom, did Tommy Frazier win the Heisman? Not to my knowledge. I don't know, he, but uh, he, he never panned out in the, the pros. But for some reason, Greg likes him. So we're going to go with that. It's been interesting today. We've seen, we've seen no small ball so far today. And when they get to the NCS and you need to manufacture runs, that's usually a big part of the game. Well, Irving worked a walk in the second inning. That was when uh, Campolindo scored both their runs, and the line was pretty strange. There's a strike, a walk. An air, stolen base, a walk, an air on a fielder's choice, and then a hit by the number nine batter. One and two to Irving. Gala is the on-deck hitter for Campo here in the fourth inning. There goes the runner. And then he stops, Ooh. and the fastball was nice. up and in. Nice fake steal. Now what he's trying to do is set up for when he does go. Diallo's not reading the runner. He's predetermining if he's going to throw over or not. And there he does go. Runner goes and the ball's fouled off. There are readers and there are predeterminers. Predeterminer, he comes and said he already knows he's going to throw over. A reader will lift and then read the runner and that will, detail, that will determine whether he's going to come home or go to first. That's the first time I've ever heard a predeterminer in the description. You're, you're well on your way to color <laughs> uh, guy hall of fame with that kind of talk, coach. <laughs> when you make up your own line that like get you a t-shirt, like if you got one that said the, the, the predeterminers or something like maybe a TV show. We're on our way. Foul hard down the left field line. Looks like we do have action down in the Los Lomas bullpen. Eric nearly got one the, on the, in the Joe Ocon Memorial camera position. And there, there's a couple of guys standing in the Los Lomas bullpen. Two and two to Irving here. No outs in the bottom of the fourth. 
And a nice changeup and a strikeout for Fon. So a very unproductive out. When you get down to this part of the game, this part of the order, you, got, you want to move people into the scoring position. Just the second strikeout of the ball game for Fon. You can see that was a nice changeup, Coach. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Here's Gala. Reached on an error, and uh, that brought in the first run. That was that crazy play with kind of a nubber out to th the first baseman. Atkins threw over Stanley's head, and the run came in on that air. Marshall's doing a good job over at first base. He's working Fawn pretty well. Oof. Fastball for a strike. Looked up in the zone there. Dolan's Lumber Doors and Windows, two locations in Walnut Creek and Concord for all your home improvement needs. Thanks a lot, Gene, and all your crew out there at Dolan's. Hope to have you back next year. Go to first. Get those double pane windows. Stay warm That's, or in the winter or, or and or cold, cold in the summer. Grounder to second. Tough to double him up on that slow hit ball. Kuhn for one. The throw to first, not in time. Nice play by the shortstop Gilmore to get that throw off. Let's watch the turn at second base here. Now batting number eight, left fielder Alex Solomon. Was he on the base? But then that goes back to what exactly. you were saying Exactly, that's what there. I'm saying. That's, yeah. why, that's why, to me, he's out at second. Yeah, if you're going to call that kind of stuff, the games are going to last 10 hours. Yep. The umpire did a good job of letting the play develop yeah. and just let it happen and make the call. In the neighborhood, it's yep. called, right? Here's Solomon, who had the big hit in RBI back in the second. Runner at first. Gala, two down. Shows a bunt. That's a good bunt. Vaughn picks it up, and it's going to be a hit. You know me, I'm a big proponent of small ball, especially down in the order. That was a nice job. That's as small as it gets right there, Gibb. The question is, was it going to keep spinning and rolling? That was, that's a, that was a tough determinant. Showed it really late like he's supposed to. It's on the line or foul, and no play. Here's a nice shot what from do you the think? scissor lift. Let it keep rolling. I think in that situation you have to. Exactly. You, there, there, you have no other choice. I mean, you, it's either going to roll foul or it's going to stay fair, and he's on anyway, there so why go. even pick it up? It's Tell you played some third base I, in your I, day. I played a little third. Yeah. Nice pitch. It's a big at bat right here. Here's Miller for the third time. Struck out in the first and uh, retired on a double play to end the second. I like about Miller, he hits deep in the count. He's confident in his in his abilities. That ball gets by the catcher, Stanley, and the runners will move up on the wild pitch. That's a Again, we're a little disadvantage I can't really see over there. I can't no. tell what happened there. I think it was a it was a curve in the dirt. You can see it hit right in front of the plate okay. there. Because I thought he went down really well. The ball must have just went over his shoulder because he, he covered up the hole really well. And as you said, now we got runners in second and third, and this could be a huge at bat. Now Fawn will work out of the windup here with two outs in the fourth. And another ball gets by Stanley blocked at that time. Beautiful. That saved a run right there. Because that ball's going to kick off down the third baseline. And that runner's, that runner's going to make it standing up. Gets out there really nice. Is a sponge, not a wall. And super job there. Saved a run. Two and one. Interesting, do you pitch to Miller or, or to the sophomore Ausman who's in the on-deck circle? I'm going right here. Change up over the outside corner for strike two. Two and two. See, nothing rattles Miller. He's tough. That, that call could have gone either way. He shows no reflection. The shadows are growing in front of home plate, too. That's why we're getting some controversy on some of these calls. Uh, identification by the batter. Miller. 
asks for and receives time. A lot of twos up on that board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two to nothing. Campolindo here, bottom of the fourth. Oh, he called that a strike on a late call on a fastball in the inside corner as Fawn reached back and threw one. Yeah. That, that, that was, that was the, the Fawn rock. That little right giddy up on that one. Two to nothing, Campos. We go to the fifth. Arizona, key tag. Check your pockets. Hi, I'm Rob from Central Tuna. Check this out. Oil filter. Oil filter crusher. Did you know that every drained used oil filter that comes off your car still contains up to a cup of used oil? That used oil can destroy our environment and water supply. Do the right thing and place your used oil filter in a clear Ziploc bag and place it on the curb with the rest of the recyclable items. If your city does not have curbside used oil recycling, take it to your nearest certified used oil and filter recycling center. Call ahead for hours in the